And so here, um, we're going to be talking about these discrete dynamical systems, not only encoding them, but discussing these structure preserving mappings called homomorphisms between them, right? Um, we had discussed those previously for graphs, and you'll recall this, um, right, where we had seen for graph homomorphisms different ways in which um, one graph could be mapped into another, right? So, for example, we had one graph and we saw a homomorphism from that graph, this one at the bottom here, to this upper graph. We could do so in a number of ways, right? Um, one is 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 this way, one to one, and one to two, and this arrow goes to that arrow. Or we could map it on to this link here. So uh, one goes to two, and two goes to three, and this this link here goes to two, right? Um, alternatively, we might map both of those onto three, right? Uh, so one goes to three, two goes to three, and this one edge goes to what? To three, to the edge three here. So we had introduced this previously, these structure preserving mappings, thing category, embed it in the target category, although potentially in kind of a coarse grained way, in a way that kind of gloms some things together, like here, gloms one and two together into a single thing here. We discussed these for graphs. Remember that? And we'll probably come back to that either today or, or next time. But I noted last time that these structure preserving mappings that we examined between graphs, beyond having a certain intuition for them, they constituted natural transformations. And the, and the reason is that each of these graphs, like each of our dynamical systems, represent maps functors from a schema category into set or pin set, right? Um, so you'll remember that, right? The, the schema category for graphs was up, up here, right? We have edges and vertices, and for each edge has a target vertex, vertex to which it goes, and a source vertex. And it's maps from this, it's instances are maps from this into finset in this case like saying this v maps to a set with three elements this e maps to a set with well here it's three elements as well um and source is a function from the set of edges to the set of vertices right um that assigns for edge one the source is is vertex one uh, for edge two, the source is vertex two, and the for edge three, the, the source is uh, vertex three, right? You remember this? So this is an instance of this schema, right? We, we say it's an instance, like we might talk about a database instance. So these graphs were functors from the structure preserving mappings from a schema category into then set, set, right? Um, and so it is with these discrete dynamical systems. Each discrete dynamical system, each of these automaton that we're going to be describing are a, are a functor, are described by a functor from this schema into FinSet. Are we comfortable with that, right? Okay. Um, people following along. And because each of those is a functors, a structure preserving mapping between them, like we explored last time for graphs, the structure preserving mappings that we were about which we were just talking, like uh, um, well, any of these that we discussed uh, previously, but um, uh, you know where we have this being embedded in this graph, these structure preserving mappings between these graphs are a structure preserving mapping between functors, which is called a what? It's called a, begins with an N. It is two words, in, natural transformation, okay? And the property of the natural transformation is if you have a source category, hmm? so your functors from a source category into a target category, in our case, it's 
source category will be well for 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 discrete for for graphs it was this source category right so that's what this would be here um and they're mapped into set right or for our case for this exercise the source category will be this and they'll be mapped into set and we have these the the natural transformation has for every morphism in that source category so here the morphisms are source and target as well as of course the the identities um for our case the source morphism will be next um and and things generated from it also but the, those will generally follow from from this composition um well uh for every morphism here in the source category there's a naturality square and the naturality square relates one functor where one functor maps it functor f maps it to where functor g maps it so for dealing with graphs like we did last time we're dealing with functor f being one graph and functor g being another and we're finding the relation between where the first graph mapped it like one here um where that goes over here right where three goes over here right and, and two goes over here um so um we that's what we're going to be specifying in this natural transformation today we're going to be talking about this for these discrete dynamical systems we're going to be relating where one dynamical system maps it um uh, to where the other maps it okay um okay so um that's our goal for today now these squares will have a much simpler shape here it turns out for our case for our case of this this schema category and we're going to be seeing that okay um okay so i was hoping in this exercise to kind of build intuition by by going back and forth between kind of a graphical depiction of these things on the one hand is kind of automa the rules for the automaton how one state goes to the next goes to the next goes to the next um in this automaton uh for automaton one automaton two um successively these pairs of automaton you know sort of reason about how what is a homomorphism between them what are the what's the structure preserving map in between them you can develop kind of an intuition for what that is with any given structure but then i wanted to connect it to this naturality property mm -hmm. with this and, and that's kind of my my goal right now so the first of them involves this discrete dynamical system this automaton shown here now related to my comments later on kind of levels of abstraction um uh I, I i need to emphasize this is showing the rules of evolution of one automaton it happens to show it as a graph but that doesn't mean this that that what we have here is an instance of a graph schema no no, no. what i'm what i'm doing is i'm using this to illustrate the the behavior of this dynamical system okay that one goes to two state one goes if you're in state one the next time step you go to state two if you're in state two next time step you go to state three uh, if you're in state three next time step you go to state four if you're in state four you go back to one mm -hmm. so don't get distracted by this like oh what's the instance of the graph scheme no, no, no. this is we're just this is a visual depiction to let you understand the rules for this discrete dynamical system at, at at issue here um it will be characterized as an instance of this schema and so will this one okay and i chose different labels these a b and one two three four just like I'm, I'm not trying to privilege those it's just i i wanted different names so you wouldn't get confused oh one, one is the same as here no no, no. it's just I, I just wanted different names okay so we're going to consider these as instances of this schema okay 
Now, I didn't require it. I unconsciously didn't require this to be done with CatLab, but I wanted to leave the op option open of doing it with CatLab. And in fact, I did it with CatLab. <laughs> Um, now, of course, I've reasoned about it visually as well, because we can do this. We have the luxury of developing an intuition visually of, of what a homomorphism means between dynamical systems, discrete dynamical systems characterized in this visual way. Um, so what would it mean to have a homomorphism between these? Well, it's a structure preserving that, right? It's, some sort of embedding of this dynamical system in that. But it's one that it's got to preserve certain properties. It's got to, it's got to preserve this naturality square. Mm -hmm. it, it has to preserve this um, for this naturality square. Um, so I want to, I want to talk about this, uh, a little bit okay um so we're gonna have like a graph homomorphism and we're gonna be able to like um uh perhaps map down one graph uh to another here um so we're gonna have one graph uh that's encoded in a certain way and another graph encoded in another and we're gonna have a, a mapping uh between them so um what we have to do is be is honor this naturality square. We have to have this mapping, this kind of mapping from this to this that will not only visually kind of be consistent in terms of source and target, but will ensure that that the naturality square is 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 honored. Um, and let's talk about what that looks like here okay i i'm I wanted to have time to map this out but was so much demanded in my my class uh from that uh ended an hour ago i i, I wasn't able, i didn't have time to do this before class so we're going to do it interactively so i am going to call up my my drawing program and uh, i'm gonna mumble and um, I will go call up a uh, natural transformation, okay? Um, and I, I, it looks like I've created a lot of graphs of uh, natural transformations here, and we're going to open one of them. Um, okay. Um, do, 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 um, and most of these are going to be, um, yeah. Here, here we here we're gonna go. Okay. Um uh natural transformation basic, I think. Okay, here's a nice natural transformation. Okay. Are we okay with this? So let's talk about what this naturality square looks like. We're gonna talk about it for dynamical systems. We're gonna talk about it for for graphs. Okay, what this naturality square like looks like okay and to do this um i am going to um show this sort of uh a version of this image for each of those two cases okay so let's let's do this i'm gonna first do it actually for graphs just because it's maybe a little bit easier um uh to to, to think about for graphs up front and then we'll do it uh, for, uh, for dynamical systems. Okay, so with graphs, what are A and B? If, if we consider the graph schema, do you remember what that looks like? Um, excuse me, uh, graph schema. Um, what does the graph schema look like? Who can tell me? What are its two objects? You tell me. Edge, Edge. okay. And if we wanted, this one we're going to get rid of this guy here so all we have hey come on um hey hey come on um okay so which one is upstream of which which is this which would this be if we have two morphisms here one source one target what what is this one 
Is it E or V? E. E. Yeah. Each edge has a source and target being a morph of being a vertex, right? Yeah. So this is E. Are we ready for that? Okay, let's let's do that. E. And this is what? V, right? Okay, good. Um, and I should really save this for natural transformation uh, for graph schema, right? So you're going to tell me what this looks like. So what's this morphism? It could be what, for example? Source, good. And this one could be target. Okay, come on. Target. Um, and and we're going to get rid of this sort of uh, H. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, so this should be recognizable like the schema of graph, right? We okay with that? And what is this going to map over? For our graphs that we're, we're using here, what is it going to map to? What's this category going to be? These are functors from from here, uh, GR, that's the category of graph, of a schema for graph, to what? SAT or FinSAT. Um, uh, I'm going to say FinSAT just because we're dealing with finite sets. And the truth is, maybe skeleton of FinSAT, since we're not really distinguishing between things here of the same size. We just say there are five vertices or something like that here. Like like right here, there are five vertices. We don't say they are A, B, C or something like that. There are five edges or three edges, three vertices, three edges. Okay. And we're gonna say this is Vincent. Okay. Um skeleton Vincent. Okay. So we're gonna have one graph called F and one graph called G, right? So what is it going to map E over to? Well, it's going to map it over to F of E, right? And I see there's there's a little bit of, I'm gonna call this, if you could forgive me, I'm gonna call this lowercase e, just so it's really clear what's, why is this? Oh, look at that, okay, let's, let's try this. I'm gonna call it lowercase e, if that's okay. This is a little bit awkward, but I just wanna make it very clear what's a functor and what's a, what's a, uh, an object, okay. Um, so, hey, come on, come on. I got it, got it before, but somehow it's being truculent. Okay, okay, here we go. Come on, come on. Okay, there we go. Are you okay with this? Mm -hmm. And so this is going to map. This guy's going to map to f of v, right? What is what is? Oh, sorry, f of v. E. Sorry. Thank you. Um, not to be confused with iron. Okay. Um, so what is Fe? You tell me for for a graph. Like you tell me for this this here graph. What's Fe? This graph. One two three. One, two, three. Right. Mm -hmm. It the the graph maps that it's an AC set going from the graph schema to this. And it maps E to the set of edges, right? One, two, three. Are we okay with that? Okay. And what is this one here? G of E. It's, it's exactly right. And if we have, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to use a particularly simple example. Just so imagine this is actually F. Okay. So. F is mapping E to what here? One. To just one, right? So the set one for our case, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it maps, uh, G maps one. E to what? One, one two, three, yeah. right? Do you want me to write this in here, what this is? One, is that needed? Is, is that helpful? What do you people think? You want me to write in? Sure. Like one? Okay. So I'm going to write in one here for our particular case. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I'll write in GE equals three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Um, and I, oh, you know what? It's latex. So it has to, it has to need, it needs these back. back. I want them because uh, I want to connote that these are sets. I could alternatively do underline, which is kind of a nice notation for it, but um, maybe less. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, good. Yeah, so this is FE, right? At the cost of elaborating it. And this is GE. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. And this will be alpha e. Right. Okay. Good. Um. Good. Now, here we have e mapped over, and here we have v mapped over. So what is this? Instead of f b, it's what f v. And you're going to tell me for this guy here, what is it going to be? One and two, right? Are we okay with that? Okay. Hey, why is it saying? Okay, there we go. Are we okay with that? So, FV is there. And what is, and I am going to, I think it's this one. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that. Um, what would f of f be it would be what okay. f of target so or sorry or i'm going to call it source because i think we well okay yeah i guess it was target wasn't it hey oh no okay f of target good yeah the, it was the black one over there okay and this is so in other words it's the function applied to target and that maps sorry yes Sorry, it's the morphism inset resulting from mapping from F mapping target, and that's a, a morphism inset is a what? It's a function. It's a function. What function is it? You tell me. What is F of source here for this, for this guy here? Well, it maps one. What's the source of one, arrow one? One. What vertex? One. one. And what's the target of arrow one? Two. Two right? Two. Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have, instead of GB, we're going to have G what? Mm -hmm. V. And what is GV for this second one here? What is G of V? What is V map to? Mm -hmm. It maps to three. One, two, three. Yeah. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. Are we okay? We okay with that? And once again, we're going to clean this up a little bit. We don't need three of these. We don't need one going back. Okay. And uh, what is G of F going to be? G, G target. And this guy's going to be G of source, right? Okay. Now, Nona pointed out that this is alpha E, and this is going to be alpha what? B. So remember, for each morphism in this, this naturality square has to hold, okay? So for source, this square is going to go like this, this this and then this and the green for target it's gonna go like this this ah this this one this one this one this one has to commute for each 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 time the square has to commute so let's unpack that um so so let's do it let's finish the thought for this guy here right um g e is what here uh, GE is one, two, three. Why is GE one, two? Oh, wait, wait, we said one, two, three. Yes. Why is it one, two, three? Because 
Which one, two, three is it? The edges. edges. For the edges. Good. Or the arrows. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll come back for why we might say edges. Okay. And sorry? Change the dark paper lines and the G. The mapping dark lines, the triangles. The big ones. What about them? Oh, this one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this should instead be G V, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and B. Okay. Are we okay with this? Okay. And so here we should include. Uh, yeah. Alpha, v after, after, yeah. After, 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 after. Yeah. Right. Right. So let's we'll we'll go through the reasoning of this, and this is really important, especially for reason about the dynamical systems. But it's important here. So what this is saying is, like for source, this naturality square has to hold. Either, okay. So so you. You can either have start here um, and consider this graph, and for each edge, take its sort of translate that into where it maps to, right? So this maps to three here, right? Um, uh, and then take the target of that edge, and you have to get the same thing as if you did what? So, so if we start with an edge here, we have to be able to get the same result in one of two ways. Um, it, it has to be the same result. One is you take this edge and you do what? You map it over, and then you take its source. Mm -hmm. um, uh, has to be the same as taking that edge and considering its what source and then mapping over. Mm -hmm. So the edges and the sources have to be matched in consistent ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have to be able to either take a source in F and map over or interchangeably it has to be give the same result as mapping that edge over and taking it source. Do we get that sense? Mm -hmm. And the same thing with target, right? Mm -hmm. I have to be able to, if I give an edge, take its target, and then map, uh, take so take its target, and then map over, I have to get the same result as mapping over that edge and taking its target. Are we comfortable with this? Mm -hmm. In both cases, I hope it's clear, that you're going to be starting with here with an edge in in the first graph that's f of e and i have to be able to get to a vertex in the target graph in in two different ways they have to be the same do you do you get that are we comfortable with that so this is for this particular case uh that we're looking at here and I, I i was hoping that maybe i could select this region and paste it in just so we could see it real pretty like within this um so we're going to save this so uh graph transformation um v1 okay um okay and let's see can i insert can I insert a nice picture here, uh, mumble, uh, here. This looks like a picture, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> okay, so what do I do? What do, how, do I, how do I do a picture? Um, uh, there's gotta be a way to, to do this. What do I, what do, I do? I, oh, there, there we go. Okay, for some reason it wasn't coming up earlier. Okay, so here we go. So this is for this case, do you agree? by the these things okay and obviously it'll be different a little bit but you get the idea of interchangeability it, it has to map edges and vertices in a consistent way the way that plays together nicely a way that's well behaved it can't scramble them, right yeah. okay 
So now let's do this for discrete dynamical systems. Could, could we try to do it? Okay. So I'm going to try to, what, what do we, what do we, how do I, well, okay, select object, boom, and then I can drag this up. Okay, okay, okay. So now let's do this for discrete dynamical systems, right? Okay, um, naturality square, or natural, natural transformation, um, basic, um, because we only are going to have one non-trivial morphism here, okay? And I'm going to save this ahead of time. Um, so I'm going to say uh, DDS schema, right? Okay, so what's our source category going to be now? DDS. DDS. We're dealing with two functors, F and G. Each of them is a mapping from, and I had a nice picture of it in a, uh, well, there it is, this one here, right? Or this, uh, no, well, yeah, you can remember this, uh, this one right here, right? Okay, so are we ready with this? So we're gonna make it from DDS mm -hmm, to FinSet, right? We're gonna be encoding it. It's actually the skeleton of FinSet. So there's only one, it's going to be one set of size three, one of set of size four, one set of size five, one set of size one. We're going to clump together sets of size one that contain a flower, an elephant, especially the elephant, um, the rock, a professor, or whatever, right? Um, all those are going to be mapped to the same, going to be the same thing. Okay. So you're going to tell me, what are these things over here going to be? Well, it's, okay, so this is going to be what? Next. Now, what is A? State. State. And maybe we would have drawn it a little bit differently if we drew it from the get-go, but we'll, we'll, we'll draw it out. What, what, what is B here? State. State. It's the same thing. It just happens to be from that to itself. So I'll draw it this way, but I think you would agree that, you know, I, I, might, I might choose to draw it a different way if I were to draw it from the get-go, right? And, and I, I could do that, but I, I, I want to be able to sort of compare it a bit visually. Okay, so FA is mapping over state, right? And... FB is mapping over state, right? Yeah. So this is going to seem kind of repetitive. GA is going to map over state according to the other one, um, and and GB is going to map over state, right? Um, and and so now we're going to be dealing with these two different ones of these, right? Yeah. So this is going to be F, and this is going to be G. Are we comfortable with that? Yeah. So what is F of state, you tell me here. What's the set for this this one here? This is F. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Um oh no. Okay. Okay. Uh so easily do I forget. Okay. Um uh, okay. Okay. Okay, are we ready with that? What is G of that going to be? A, B. I, I'm going to call it A, B. Skeleton of fin set only has one thing of size two, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it G of state equals, yeah, A, B. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, no, one's, no one's breathing down my neck. Uh, and I did say fin set instead of skeleton of fin set, so I, I'm going to be forgiven. These are finite sets. Okay. Happy, happy. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, what is FF going to be here? It's, it's mapping over. It's for this guy here. So we're going to be mapping over next, right? This is... Well, it has to map that particular dynamical system as some map for next. And that, 
that rule for next is given by this visually. Are we okay with that? So this is going to be F what? F next, right? Mm. Are we okay? And this is going to be what? What's B? State. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. Now, um, we know what F state is. It's this guy here, right? In fact, they should have just should have just copied it over and 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 and, and used that. Are we okay with that? Um, and similarly, G state is we know what it is, right? Yeah. Don't be distracted. It's the same object in it. We just we're just drawing it in on as normally on for me unartful way. And F is what here? Next, good, good. Are we okay? Okay. So, so what is this telling us now about for dynamical system? If we have one dynamical system, we have another. What is this naturality square? There's a big check mark here, and I don't know where my check mark go. Where'd my check mark go? Give me my check mark. Um, maybe I could do check. Check. Can I can I check mark? LaTeX delivers. Okay. Behold and wonder. Um look at that. Worthy of its name. Okay. Um okay. Okay, so what is this? What is the rule, the naturality square telling us? about mapping dynamical systems what's its gist what is it what is it doing here hmm? well it's telling us if if we if we have a, a certain state and we have to do the, get the same result in two different ways we have to have guaranteed to be the same result in two different ways what's what's one what one thing that we could do we could take the next here, the next state, right? So if we're in state one, we take state two, and then do what? Map it over to the other side. Um, that has to be the same as doing what? Mapping over to, so, so maybe one goes to A, and then doing next and that. So, this is a mapping not merely kind of visually that oh well one and two can go to a and three and four can go to b no 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 you have to be it's more subtle than that whatever a one goes to over here if we do next on it we have to get what so so if we consider well next of one here is two right so we know that whatever map one maps to if we map it over first and then do next over here, we have to get the same result as doing next here and mapping that over. Mm -hmm. So let's suppose you said um, one goes to A. And suppose you said two goes to A. Mm -hmm. And three goes to B and four goes to B. Would that be a natural, would that observe the naturality square? If no, if if you if you were to say, I'm just giving you a hypothetical. If you were to say one and two go to A and three and four go to B, um, what would would that match the naturality square? I see Larissa shaking her head, and Larissa's Larissa is exactly right. It it doesn't. And what's wrong with that? You don't have. The state of one going to two in when you if you first go from yes. one to two yes and then map over yes you'll have a but if you go yes. from yes. one to a and then try and map over you're gonna get b, b. and that's the, exactly so you need to these two have to be you know um, completely compatible in terms of the dynamics observed right um uh in in terms of the dynamics observed if you update here and then map over or map over and then update you have to get the exact same thing 
And if we glommed one and one and two into A, and then three and four into B, you, you might think visually, wait a minute, it's it's just like this, right? We have one and two here, three and four here. It's kind of a nice glomming and it's everything's consistent. But you'd be mistaken. Because what you need to actually preserve is not just the visual appearance that, oh, these two could go there, and then there's an arrow to the other, um, and then there's an arrow back. No, no, no. You, you have to preserve this update behavior. Do you get that point? Yeah, you, you're preserving the structure in terms, yes, in terms of this update behavior. And, and so you have to map one to something that if you then call next here, you get the same result as you would get by doing next here and then mapping over. Do you, do you get that? So they have to play nicely together. They have to be consistent. They have to be, um, they have to uh, play by the same rules. Uh, and so what I'm telling you is that mapping one and two to A um, and, and three and four to B won't, won't have the same thing. Because if you update here, you'll stay in A. You know, if you update here one to two, okay, I'm at state two now, I map over it's A, right? It's, so I'm, I start in kind of what would map to state A and I stay in state A, right? Um, whereas if I mapped over to A and then do it over here, I'd go to B. And so they don't give the same result. I would know, oh, I'm it, it you know it, it it's it's not the same it, it they would yield in incompatible behaviors do you get that yeah. they have to kind of this has to be squished into this in a way that guarantees the same behavior so tell me what's a mapping of one two three and four to to these guys which would preserve that behavior can you tell me what do you want it someone? You can go. <laughs> One to A, two to B, yep. three to A, and four to B. Good. So that that sends one and three to A, and two and four to B. I think Nona had the same idea in mind, same great idea. But but it preserves this update, right? So suppose I'm in one and I update here on the left, I get two. And I map over, what am I going to get? So again, I start in one. If I update over here, I go to two. And then I map over to this guy, what am I going to get? B. Versus if I start here, I map over, what do I get if I map one over here? If I map one over to this guy, what do I get? A. a. And then I do next here, what do I get? B. So those yield compatible things, right? Mm -hmm. Update here, map over yields B, map over, and then update here yields B. Do you get that? Or suppose I started in two, right? I suppose I'm, I'm in state two, I map over here, what do I get? Sorry, if I'm in state two, I'll, I'll do it in the same order. I'm in state two here. I map, I, I do update over here, three, and I map over, what do I get? Or eight, right? Um, or I, I map over two directly, I'm in what? B, and then I update here, I get A. So you see this naturality square? I have to be able to either map over in the source, or sorry, yeah, I, 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 to update in the source, and then map over, that's what this represents, mapping of these states to this, has to give the same result as mapping over and then updating do you, in, in the target. Do you see that? They have to be compatible. They have to play nicely. They have to be consistent in terms of the observed behavior. In both cases, we're kind of coarse graining this, but it's more subtle than we just squish this in, one and two go to A, three and four got to be no 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 that wouldn't observe this we have to preserve this update behavior do we get that are we are we comfortable with that I, i'm glad to dwell on this more if they're if people are struggling with this 
still for the table for the yeah. mappings. Yeah. You you can do it directly from the finite state. And is that why we don't care about the arrows within the finite state? Like we didn't name the arrows in the DDS. Sorry, not the finite state, in the DDS. Um, in the DDS. Graphs. Um, instances though. Uh, oh, um, so, so for, so maybe, I, I don't know if this will help at all, but for the case of graphs, yeah, we had vertices and edges because each of them had an object here. Oh, okay, yeah. There's only one object here, state. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's only one object here. You see that? Yeah. And then we, and, and we have the version of next as it is in this graph yeah. is given by this the version of next as it is and sorry in this fun discrete dynamical this automata is given here this one is given here yeah and we have a mapping between them and this mapping what goes to a what goes to b that's given by alpha alpha and and alpha a and alpha b are the same isn't it <laughs> there's really only one alpha here there's only one alpha, which is alpha next. That's the only one, right? It's alpha next. No, it's next. Are we okay with that? Yeah. So, so really, I mean, this is kind of a degenerate square. Really, this loop, this f next is a loop here. Are we okay? It's more than one, uh -huh. like possibility. Like if you brought one to b. Good. Kind of yes, there's more than one. In fact, I'm going to show it oh, to you right now. Okay. There's more than one. So um, they're sort of isomorphic. So let's go see the code to do this. Okay. So I'm going to show you the code that I I put together for this. Um, so here's DDS one uh, one a. Um, so problem one. This is DDS one a. We have four states, and the update is if you're in state one, you go to state two next. If you're in state two, you go to state three. If you're in state three, you're state four. And you're, so your current state is the position you're looking at. I'm in state one, so my next thing I do go is two. I'm in state two, the next thing I go to is three, because it's position two, right? Gives me where, where I am now. And this number here gives me where I go to, right? And here's where I go to from state one. Are we okay with this encoding? Okay, so this is my AC set, right? This is my schema. Are we okay with that as the schema? Do you recognize that? It's a free schema, so we are guaranteed to have not only next, but what? Next, next, and next, 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 and all those sort of things. That's a free schema. Are we okay? Okay. Um, so this is our free schema um, uh, here, and and we just we characterize an instance we say hey this is an inst instances of it look like this they're a, they're an ac set type for this a, a mapping from this to set or defense set or what have you um and then this is my first one and we're going to come back to what this is this is actually a rather nice although it, it's in this case it's it's a bit ugly but in general it's rather nice 1B is this guy here, okay? Two states. If you're in A, the next one you go to is two. If you're in B, the next one you go to is one. Are we okay with that? So there it is encoded. Are we okay with this being an AC set? Okay, and you, you can see this actually depicts it rather nice. We'll talk about this category of elements later, but here's the Jenna, the Jenna brilliance. Um, so Jenna's exactly right. There's two things, which captured the basic idea, but the first of them, the first of the transformation sends one, uh, one to one, so one to A, two to two to B, right? Uh, three to A and four to B. Mm -hmm. By the way, I don't have really the option of saying these are called A and B here without getting into attributed C sets and so one step at a time for this class. Okay. The other one, we have one that's kind of just the flip of that, right? One goes to B, two goes to A, three goes to B, four goes to A, 
Mm -hmm. Those are two homomorphisms. And I can just ask, find me your homomorphisms. And it will tell me what the structure preserving mappings are. Are we okay with that? The ones from this to this that guarantees this naturality square. Mm -hmm. One to A, three. Well, okay, so let's let's think about that. Well, okay, one to A, three to B. Um, I'm I'm gonna say this this gonna be a problem <laughs> because three uh, two uh, A. Uh, wait, wait, sorry. One to one to A, three to B, you said? What is two? This is composition. This is the composition. There is no composition. This isn't, this isn't a category. There's no composition guaranteed here. There's nothing about this. There's and, and we're gonna come back to that potential misunderstanding, because I think a lot of students study uh confused but this there's composition in the schema there's composition but there's no composition in the instance produced by the schema right there there's no composition that's guaranteed to be there in the instance preserved by it there's there's nothing that says there's a link from one to three mm -hmm. Okay, and this is an important realization we'll come back to. It's it's what's called a level confusion, okay? Okay, how about this one? What do we have here? Do we have, do we have any homomorphisms from this to this? I wasn't sure. I didn't know where to see this. I, I was like, thought that maybe you could have mm -hmm. these transitions. Um, or like all these, all these states, sorry, go to star. Yeah. Good. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. It's just all the, all the states go to star. Because Good. That would allow you to have okay. one to two would go well, to star. Okay. So, yeah. So, so we're going to be dealing with this is a depiction of a dynamical system, right? Yeah. So the states here are one, two, three, four, and the states here are just, there's only one state, mm -hmm. elephant, right? And what is this rule here? Star goes to what? There's only one choice, star. What's that? There's, well, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So it's an identity, yeah, because it is a, this maps over to a function, yeah? So there is an identity function, yeah? Map star to star. Okay, so let's talk about homomorphisms. We are going to need something where if you, if you're one, and you do the update here and then map over that you're in the same state as mapping over and then updating. Mm -hmm. Does this match that? Yeah. yeah. Same thing with here. It's kind of a, in a kind of trivial way, but it matches, right? Everything maps to star, and this is just identity. Yeah, it, it, it map, maps exactly. It, it'll be consistent because whether you update first here and map over or map over and update, you're going to get star. <laughs> There's no choice. It's just star. You're going to be in star. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Um, so this naturality square will hold because this guy is, what is this guy here? Just a star. It's just the the one thing, right? And so there there's no choice. And in fact, G next is well, it's by just in some vacuous way or some trivial way, it's just identity. It can only map it can only map to one thing. <laughs> it's no choice, but not to star. Because it's got to map to something, and there's only one choice, but maps to star. Are we okay with that? So <laughs> So look, this is gonna be identity here. And this only has one choice. One, two, three, four, got a star. So it's identity, identity. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's this is not identity. This just maps to star. And then identity is the same as here, 
any map which then maps to to the single star, right? It it, it it's guaranteed to end up in star. No matter what thing you come from here, it maps up in star. The result. Do you, do you get that? Yeah. Okay. So yes, this maps. You tell me. Let's suppose this were a five state thing. Would it have one? Yeah. What's it have suppose one. it had three things? Would it have one? Yeah. yeah. Any any graph here is going to have something. Even a empty one is going to have a vacuous one. Um, okay. Okay. So let's go look at the code for that. Ready? Here we go. Take them exercise two. First of all. We have the same one. I don't know if you noticed, but it was the same as the previous one. So we, well, this was the same as in the previous problem. Okay, right? And and where's one B? Well, it's one, and the next is just this. Okay, okay. It just goes to one. What are the homomorphisms? One, two, three, four. Go to one. Right and um, and uh, yeah um, yeah it goes to one so one goes to one two goes to one three goes to one guess what four goes to one right and it it all works it's it's maybe not that interesting but it maybe it is kind of interesting it's like anything could be mapped to this consistently. It's a graph homomorphism. Anything. Everything has a unique map map to it. Should that make you think of something? Anything has a unique map to it? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. Are, are people comfortable with this? Why this is a homomorphism? Mm -hmm. The update rules are consistent. You update over here, and then you map over. It's the same as mapping over and updating here, right? That's the gist of this, right? You can update here and map over and scotch it down to the other one, embed it in the other one, or you can embed it first and then update. And you have to get the same thing for it to be structure preserving, to be to honor that structure of the dynamical system. Are we okay with that? Okay, I hope you're getting the flavor of this. Okay, how about this one? This is like, looks kind of like a nine or a comma or something. But um, okay, so so what do we have here? Do we have any homomorphisms here? Okay, do you think we have two? Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's at least one. Okay, so so give me one. Okay, so we have one, two, and three all go to B. Yes. And four goes to A. Good. And what's another one? I want to say one, two, three, and four all go to B. All go to sure. B. All go to B. This is like our star. Okay. <laughs> right? You can almost see a twinkling. Um, right? It, it, they they all go to B, right? That that's perfectly it doesn't say they have to hit all of these. It's not like there's an epimorphism. It's not like saying it's a it's a it's a map over that has to hit all things. It can be embedded in here just in this thing. Just like when we were dealing with those graph homomorphisms, we could put them all, remember they could all go into uh one node, right? They could all go like to here. So it doesn't have to go to all of them, they could all squish down, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have two. Um, so here are two of them. Here, here's the kind of nine-ish thing and the kind of comish mm -hmm. thing, and and you can kind of see this nice depiction of them, which we'll we'll talk about later. And here are the two, the stilling. Stilling homomorphisms. Okay. 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 Uh, hey, back here. There we go. Okay. So here we go. The first sends one to B, two to B, three to B, and four to not B. No, four to A. 
okay? Um, just like Larissa said, the other one sends them all to B. Are we okay with that? Squishes them down, but it's not merely a virtual squishing. It has to squish down a waste that are true to its update rules, that play with its update rules. You can either update over here, map over, or map over, and then update. And they have to be the same thing. Are we okay? Okay, now how about, how about this one? Number four. So here, here are two, two things here. Is this, what do you think? I wrote with a mini proof by contribution okay. on my take home exercise. Okay, I, I, admire, I admire the clarity that comes with that. Yeah, they're. But I am not any longer. Okay, good, 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 good. That's the point of these exercises to figure out where the confusions are and identify them so you can pick up more in the discussion. Okay, so what what is what is incompatible here? If we let A go to, yeah, I mean, if we let one go to A, yeah. Then two must go to B, mm. but for two to go to B, we need three to go to A. Mm. And that means that we need um, mm. we need one to go to B so that the transition still exists on the other side, which we already said we we're going to have one B, A. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I like that. Um, and you're exactly right. There's no homomorphism. But I don't have the temerity of giving a proof. So um, uh, congratulations. That's, there's no homomorphisms between them. There's no way to sort of map these over so that you can either update here and then map over being the same as mapping over and then update here. Yeah, just doesn't, doesn't jog. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. Now. Okay, so um, this is ideas with graph, uh, sorry, with, uh, sort of automaton, discrete time automaton or, or discrete dynamical system uh, characterizations. Um, okay, uh, so any questions about this before we go on to a little bit more material here? People feeling okay? Are you feeling okay with this code? Okay. Okay. Um, Larissa? Is it coincidence that we don't have um, state discrete dynamical um, systems that have more than one way to go to another state? Good question. So that would require either some sort of non-determinism, either probabilistic, like you roll a dice, or sort of um, uh, possibilistic. You can go to more than one thing. And that is possible. And uh, But it would require some extra structure to capture that. Um, and it, it isn't as nice a, nice a nice small category. Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm not. I'm actually not sure if, if there's a nice C set that would. Have, well, I mean, could always capture like the, the the power set of states, but I yeah, I'm not. Um, it it would be more elaborate certainly, and and I think you know one could try to to come up with uh, with C set rules for this. You know, okay. Um, are we good with this then? Okay, so I I want to talk. Uh, a little bit more about some of I, th I think I'll I'll glom on to what what was asked earlier um, because I I want to I want to hit home um, an important point here okay um, <clears throat> that's this issue of kind of level level confusion so. Um, this this will be more bite sized. We can finish up on time, um, uh, as there there's two successive students who want to talk with me after class. Um, one at three thirty and one at four. Uh, okay, so um, the first thing is that uh, I want to I want to talk about this issue of 
um, sort of level of confusions that can come in here. So we've been talking about these, these schema categories. And I emphasize that these schema categories, that it's, it's really valuable to be able to reflect on the fact that as a category, and although this presents a category, really presents it, um, you know, there's a lot more here than what we show, right? This, this shows next, right? But beyond that, there's next after next, right? And next after next after next in ways that are going to be distinct except where required by the rules of category, like associative and, and, and you compose with the, with a identity morphism, you get the same thing back. Compose next with identity, you get next. Compose identity with next and you get next. Are we okay with that? Okay, so this is really important when thinking, but what I wanna emphasize is that when you go to use these, when you have instances of these things, it's not like the instances guarantee composition them within themselves. And I, I wanna, I wanna talk about it because I, I think it's, it's pretty important. I'm gonna use the example um, of our, of our graph. So here's a graph. Are we okay with that? And uh, this is a simple graph. Okay. We're gonna have one edge here, one edge here, and one one self edge that we put in. Okay. And it's easy to glance at this and say, oh, it looks like a presentation of a category. It looks like it 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 looks like a Hasse diagram that, that presents a category. And 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 I understand that temptation, but but you gotta fight against it. Um this just happens to depict a graph. And it so happens, yes, graphs are used to depict categories here, but um, in a presentation of a category or has a diagram. But, but don't be fooled into thinking that this has categorical properties in and of itself. The schema does, the schema that maps into set. But remember, this is not itself um, uh, describing, presenting a category. So what I'm going to do to just drive this point home, and I want to make sure everyone is comfortable with it, is we're going to have one graph like this. You can see it here. We're going to have one graph like, like this, the connected pair. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask about homomorphisms between them. And you tell me, what are some homomorphisms between these? What what give, can you give me a, some homomorphisms from this graph mapping into this one? Vertex one to vertex one edge one to edge one and vertex two to edge two. Good. I mean vertex two to vertex two. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's one. Yeah. Excellent. Sorry. Two to three. So vertex one maps to two. Ed, vertex two maps to three and edge one maps to two. Are we comfortable with that? Very consistent with how we map edges to vertices. Is there a, a third one you can come up with? Well, map okay. everything to three. Remember, sorry, sorry Eric, yeah? Uh, map everything to three. Okay, map everything, okay. So one goes to three, two goes to three. What does edge one go to? Edge what? Edge three. Edge three, right? Okay, are we comfortable with that? Okay, but what I'm saying is there's no, and this is really important. You might think, if, if, if you're thinking about this, someone would say, I think it looks kind of like the presentation of category, you might think there's an edge you might think and be mistaken in thinking that there's an edge from one to three here. There's no such edge. This doesn't say that these two, com that there's a transitivity property that one and two form can be composed into an edge. That, that would be true in any category, any two end to end arrows you know, can be composed. But that's not true here with this graph. Even though it comes from, you know, a category which is freely presented when there's 
composition, here it's not this, here it's the, the graph category, way up, way up yonder. Um, you know, these these are freely presented categories, and, and of course, those categories, all these nice compositional properties, but you don't get it just because just you create a graph in this, it doesn't automatically guarantee those properties. Do you get that point? Mm -hmm. Now, could we add those properties? Yeah, yeah, we bet we could, and later we'll see how to create a schema for reflexive graphs and symmetrical graphs and graphs and, and so on. But but if we list out the homomorphisms, indeed, we find there's only those three. There's none that maps one to one and two to three as if there's some link here, because there's no implicit link. There's, there's, it's just none. There, there's no link from one to three. There doesn't have to be for it to be categorically encoded. And if we want to add one, there are sure things we can do, which will give this. And, and this is actually pretty darn important. And we're going to see it come up as a topic with causal loop diagrams, for example, because mark my words, causal loop diagrams, we may have a link shown from, you know, from um, poverty to transportation cost, right? Cost of transportation. So if someone's poor, they often it's it's often more expensive for them to travel, right? Um, and maybe from transportation costs to, you know, um, overall uh, or to to um, uh, to ease of getting a job with a negative connection. So the more transportation, or it's a harder it is to find a job. Um, so plus and minus um, that. And what I'll say is, in a causal loop diagram, that induces, it composes, it follows. There is a composition from poverty to access to jobs through that pathway that's a negative link. There is this compositional property we want to guarantee. We don't, not for all graphs, do we want to guarantee it. There, there are graphs where transitive E does apply. There are some graphs, and we can guarantee it through extra structure. Or there's somewhere it doesn't apply, but just just because there's that depiction doesn't mean it, because it reminds you of a graph doesn't mean that in fact it has these categorical properties. And so you got to be extra careful about it, particularly when we start to draw all sorts of things as graphs. I mean, after all, here we're drawing dynamical systems as graphs. We're drawing categories. The presentation of a category as a graph. We're drawing graphs as oh my goodness, graphs. Um, right? And so we have to be cautious about this because there's much being overloaded, like for presentation of category, compositional properties are guaranteed. Um, for dynamical systems, you know, uh, we will have um, uh, some, uh, we, we will have next here in the schema, um this presentation will have next after next so next after next after next but that doesn't mean there's a compositional property here that there's a link directly from one to three no that's that doesn't fall that it's not like that baked in no 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 no, no. it's it, it, when we're dealing with it here we have the properties of a category that guarantee composition these are not structures where composition is in general guaranteed if we want to ensure that it's there, there are ways we're going to see to guarantee, like with um, with causal loop diagrams, that we have all compositions of arrows in the causal loop diagram. By the way, this isn't really talked about with causal loop diagram. If you look at the causal loop schema, uh, or sorry, the causal loop literature, people haven't tended to to directly talk about it all this much, but it's a very categorical field, actually, that there's this compositional structure there. And, and we can capture it beautifully with category theory, but it won't fall out if we just declare a causal loop diagram as a schema, as a, you know, a CSAT from a schema category to, to set. It doesn't fall out automatically. We need some extra structure. And there's a beautiful extra structure to which I will introduce you. 
and to which she will enjoy the pleasure of close acquaintance in a coming uh, session. Are we okay with this? Okay, then with those words, I will close this session. Okay?